Okay, hello and welcome to the 19th episode of Quizzing with the Members. Uh, we've seen new champions in the last few episodes after the post-Pavan era, so to speak. And we have a new champion in uh, in the form of Balaji from the last episode. And he will defend his title against three new contestants. Now, one of them is a debutant, while there are two challengers who have been here before. Uh, let me call them one by one. Our first contestant is from Tanjavur, if I remember correctly, and works in the Bay Area as a software engineer. A uh, big fan of Manchester United. That's uh, Anyway, give it up for Arvind. Hey, KV. Hi, Arvind. How is your team playing here this season? All good? No comments. <laughs> <laughs> no comments. Yeah. Okay. On that note, let me call the defending champion, Balaji. Hi, KV. Hi, Balaji. How does it feel to be introduced as defending champion? <laughs> it feels quite uh, exhilarating, to be honest. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, uh, with that, we have somebody new in the series, Quizzing with Members, uh, currently based out of Singapore, works in real estate investment and asset management, uh, loves quizzing, especially on India and Hindi film music. Let's see if there is any question on those two topics. Give it up for Utkarsh. Hi, Utkarsh. Can you hear me? Hi, Kevi. Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hello, so sorry, it must be very late. It's 11.33. Yes. Right? Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Everybody has joined from different this thing here. Everybody is making effort, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Arvind, what time is it? At, with, you are uh, 7 30 a.m. on 7:30. a Saturday. That's what. <laughs> yes. Arvind, Arvind <laughs> wins on the inconvenient uh, category. A last contestant had a heartbreak last time he came here. Uh, lost to Pavan in the last question. I still sometimes think of the candidate's candidate question, gives me nightmare sometimes. Give it up for Vijay. Vijay. Hi, KV. Nice to be back. Yes, nice to have you back because a lot of people also wanted you back. A lot of people <laughs> blamed me for not giving you full points for candidates, candidate. But I think it was fair. I think yeah. it was fair. at the end of the day, it was great fun. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's have more fun. Arvind, Balaji, Utkarsh, Vijay. You all know how this works. So we will start the quiz now. Let's begin. First question to Arvind. Okay, Arvind, looking at a two-word answer. Okay, the two-part British television documentary series called 1066, The Battle for Dash Dash. That's the blank you need to fill. Transports viewers to a pivotal moment in English history, the Norman conquest of England. Instead of dwelling on the exploits of kings and conquerors, the series intricately weaves the tales of ordinary individuals swept up in the events of the year 1066. Narrated by the esteemed actor Sir Ian Holm, the documentary unfolds in the Sussex village of Crowhurst, a place etched in history and documented in England's earliest surviving public record, the Domesday Book. Interestingly, now this is a big clue, interestingly, the title of the series might mislead some to think of a mythical world in books. But director Justin Hardy deliberately chose a term used by Anglo-Saxons to describe their own world. Just filling the blank with the two-word phrase missing here. 1066, the battle for dash dash. Yeah, I have no idea. Pass. Okay, Arvind passes. We go to Balaji. Are there, like, is this a two-word answer? Yes. I'll pass. Okay, passing to Utkarsh. Eldorado. Not El Dorado, passing to Vijay. Okay. Uh, yes. So uh, I had some time to think and I do have an answer, but I'm not sure if it is correct. Is it Middle Earth? It is Middle Earth. That's all beautifully done. It is Middle Earth. 13 points there to Vijay. It is Middle Earth. The battle of uh, the battle for Middle Earth. And that's why the big clue was the series title might mislead. Some to think of a mythical world in books, which is, of course, the the book being referred is, of course, Tolkien's work, where Middle Earth is the fictional third age. Okay, 1066, the battle of Middle Earth. 13 points there to Vijay. Okay, next direct to Arvind. Arvind, uh, here I'll need a book and an author. Okay, rarely does a book encapsulate an entire society. And when it does, it's typically not succinct. In 1776, Wise extensive work, X, X is the book, Y is the author, made a resounding impact on economic policy. According to the late journalist P.J. O'Rourke, 
why outline three fundamental principles for a country's financial prosperity free trade division of labor and acknowledgement of self interest he suggested that even intellectuals should be able to grasp these basic concepts why the author challenged the prevailing notion of hoarding dash emphasizing the true dash lies in the products exchanged in a competitive markets place while others also explored similar ideas x became synonymous with the entire free market economic system despite ongoing debates about its myths and misunderstanding tell me which book are we talking about and who is the author uh no pass sorry okay passing to balaji is it adam smith and wealth of nations beautifully done of course it's wealth of nation and adam smith okay probably the most iconic work in the field of economics and finance etc etc all the blanks for wealth by the way holding wealth and uh, the true wealth lies in the products exchange uh, adam adam smith's wealth of nation 11 points there to balaji which means the next direct will be to utkarsh okay now we are changing field we are going to the world of music Okay, Utkar. During the creation of the iconic 1971 song "Ellie Woman," the lyrics took a turn with the mysterious line "Mr. Mojo Rise In." If you've heard the song, you've heard the line. But even if you've not, it's workable. Drummer John Densmore revealed that the phrase inspired a unique musical journey within the song, as they sang about cops and topless bars and a solitary woman. The tempo shifted, slowing down and then exhilarating with the suggestion of a passionate climax. Okay, the word mojo, rooted in voodoo and adopted by blues culture, symbolized prowess in a certain aspect of life. But what do you think was the main reason for choosing Mister Mojo Rising? Okay, so basically, it is a musical funda question. What do you think is the funda behind Mister Mojo Rising in the song "Ellie Woman"? Yeah, uh, it is the anagram for Jim Morrison. Beautifully done. Straight ten tooth curse. Beautifully done. Utkarsh gets ten. Of course, Mr. Mojo Rising is the anagram for the lead singer of the Doors, Jim Morrison. Okay, anagram of Jim Morrison, Mr. Mojo Rising. Okay, which means the next direct will be to Vijay. Vijay, uh, in a twist of fate, the original eighteen thirty six patent for a crucial invention was lost in eighteen thirty six when a mysterious incident engulfed Blodgett's Hotel. This vital creation aimed uh, at combating destructive forces in early American communities lost its historical documentation against the very enemy it was designed to control. These devices, painted in vibrant colors for visibility, have a secret language through color coding, indicating capacities from red to be around 500 gallons to blue 1500 gallons. The true inventor, whether Frederick Graff Sr. or Bert Sil Holly Jr., remains a mystery. But the spirit of innovation lives on in these life-saving devices. Tell me, what device or what are we talking about? Does it have something to do with fire? Yes, yes. Can you build on that? Fire extinguishers. Is it fire extinguishers? I'll give you a chance to improve your answer, Vijay. I don't want another candidate to have. Mm-hmm. Fire is very good track. Fire extinguisher is very good track. But again, just read the question again, and I'll okay. give you. So, is it fire hydrants? Yes, fire hydrants is what I was looking for. It can't be extinguisher because it says gallons and fifteen hundred gallons, five hundred gallons, which doesn't make sense for fire extinguisher. The answer is fire hydrants. Now it makes sense. Red, blue, etc. And the original patent was lost in a fire. That is the irony that fire hydrant patent got lost in a fire. Okay, so ten points there to Vijay, and we come to Arvind again. Arvind, I'm talking about a certain band, so your answer will be a band. This band's moniker, uh, a band's name basically, was born from a tale of indigenous Australians cuddling dingoes in pits during cold nights. Vocalist Danny Hutton's then girlfriend June Fairchild. drew this idea from a magazine article on frosty nights the practice evolved to sleeping with two dogs and it became bitterly cold it became a dash 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 that is the answer dash 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 the answer will be a three word phrase which fits here 
when frosty nights the practice evolved to sleeping with two dogs and it became bitterly cold it became a dash 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 famed amongst other things for their rendition of harry nilsson's one what's the band's name that echoes this canine themed cold comfort <laughs> Pass. Okay, passing to Balaji. Yeah. Uh, no idea. Pass. Okay, passing to Utkarsh. I'll guess three dogs sleep over. I'll give you a chance to improve Utkarsh because I did it with Vijay earlier. I'll be fair. You're very close. You are as close as possible. Think about it again. You're almost there. Three dogs sleep in. I'll come back to you. If nobody gives a better answer, I'll actually close. I'll give it. I'll give you points and close this. Going to Vijay. Is it sleeping with dogs? Not sleeping with dogs. So what I'll do is I'll actually Utkarsh was almost there. Uh, so I'll give you some points and close this. So you actually twelve was the point uh, when it came to you, Utkarsh. So I'll give you nine and close this. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. so I'll give you nine and close this because I also give you a chance to improve. You're very close. You just overthought. The answer is three dog night. That's all. Okay, the answer yeah. is three dog night. You almost got there. You went to three dog sleepover and everything else, but three dog night. So I'm giving nine to Utkarsh and closing it. And we'll go to Vijay, the next direct. Vijay, we are talking about a certain Olympic event now. During the 1900 Paris Games, over 300 dashes met their demise in the X competition. The dashes were released from spring boxes positioned within a fenced arena and participants aimed to score points by causing a short dash to land inside the designated ring. Precision was crucial as competitors risked elimination if they failed to hit two consecutive dashes. The event carried substantial seriousness, offering a noteworthy prize of 20,000 francs, which is equivalent to approximately $120,000 today. Remarkably, this peculiar event made its sole appearance in the Olympics and is unlikely to make a return in future editions as well. What Olympic event are we talking about? Something to do, something to do with pigeons. Okay, can you just... Pigeon shooting? On? Pigeon shooting, yes, I'll give it to you. Live Pigeon shooting. That was the Olympic event. It was they actually had an Olympic event in 1900 Paris where you had to shoot live pigeons. More than 300 pigeons died in this. Okay, 10 points there to Vijay. And I come back to Arvind. <coughs> Arvind, in uh, Japan, the tradition of naming imperial eras known as Jengo or Gengo is deeply rooted in history. This unique practice has seen almost 250 eras since its inception in the 7th century. Riva, the current era, composed of two kanji characters, Ri and Wa, draws inspiration from a stanza in the Manyoshu, which is the oldest collection of Japanese poetry. In a literary context, these characters signify fortunate or auspicious and peace or harmony. However, interpretations vary with some detecting authoritarian undertones in the first character, meaning order or command. Now, this specific name, Riva, deviates from which long-standing tradition that has persisted for many centuries? So, okay, so is this like the way or like the like how the name is derived is different from how it was? Yeah. Earlier? Yeah. Okay. The, basically, the name Kajofanda, this Riva name has come mm. from wherever they have taken. It's very different from all the names right. okay. from before Riva. In what way this is different from everything else before this one? Um, did like the um, was this the first one that was like voted for or like ah, okay. the no, 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 not not the voting funder. Going to Balaji. This is the first one where both the characters Re and Wa are like, uh, they uh, mean the same thing. Like initially, like before that, the two parts used to mean opposites of each other. Uh, no, no. Going to Utkarsh. So I'll guess that 
mostly the names of the eras are based on the names of the dynasties that are ruling at that point. Like Meiji era would be uh, named no, based no, on the dynasty's one, no. name. No, going to Vijay. So is it that uh, this was uh, the origin was from Japanese history while the earlier ones had Chinese origins? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Okay. That is absolutely correct. So every other era so far was derived from Chinese literature. And this that's why this is a big, big thing right now in Japan. The current era is derived from Japanese sources. Okay? The, the first era named to have been inspired by Japanese rather than Chinese work of classical literature. So a lot of Jap Japanese, this thing has been affected by Chinese literature. and But this one, as you saw in the question, is derived from an old collection of Japanese poetry, Man Yoshu. Okay, so this one again gives 13 points to Vijay, 13, which means I come back to Arvind for a sports question. Arvind, May 31, 1984 is an iconic day for cricket, particularly for X, who played what is widely considered to be the greatest ODI innings of all time. Commemorating nearly a year since that famous loss, X marked the occasion with a remarkable century. So sorry. The audience at Old Trafford was taken aback by the display. Eldin Baptist and Dash Dash were the only other two players to achieve double figures on that day. X, meanwhile, aggressively confronted the England bowling attack consisting of Bob Willis, Ian Botham, Neil Foster with an array of smashing, crashing, hooking, cutting and pulling, ultimately scoring 189. His innings included 21 fours and 5 sixes propelling the team to a massive 104-run victory. Who are we talking about? Uh, give us the second. The dashes are it, are they blanked out because that uh, players from the same country? Or... Yeah, 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 correct. Okay. That dash is blanked out because it's a giveaway okay. in some sense. Yeah. Sir, I knew this answer when I was like 10, 12 years old. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I think this is wrong, but I'm still going to. I don't know why I'm. I think it's wrong, but okay. Is it Brian Lara? Not Brian Lara. Going to Balaji. Uh, is it Vivian Richards? Why not? Of course, it's Vivian Richards. Eleven <laughs> points there to Balaji. It is Vivian Richards. It is Vivian Richards, one of the greatest innings ever played, 1984, a year since that famous loss that, of course, came against India a year before in the famous World Cup final in 1983. And Eldin Baptist and Michael Holding were actually the only two players to achieve double figures on that day. And then Viv Richards came and hit 189, which was a world record for many, many years until uh, Saeed Anwar came and hit 194. Okay, so 189... Highest score in ODI for many, many years. Considered to be the best innings of all time. With Richards, 11 points there to Balaji. And that brings us to the end of the first half. Good time to take a break and look at the score so far. Arvind yet to start scoring. Balaji has 11 each for Wealth of Nations. Adam Smith and Viv Richards, 22. Mutkarsh has 10 for Jim Morrison, Mr. Mojo Rising Funda. And 9 for 3 Dog Night, both from Music. 19 to Utkarsh, but right now with a massive lead, 13 for Middle Earth, 10 for Fire Hydrant, 10 for Live Pigeon Shooting, and 13 for Chinese literature rather than Japanese the naming of Riva. Uh, Vijay leading right now with 46 points. Okay, so right now Vijay leading with 46, followed by Balaji 22, followed by Utkarsh 19, followed by Arvind on 0, but second half remains. We'll see, things can change. The order now will be Vijay, Utkarsh, Balaji, Arvind. Which is your direct. BTS's album, Map of the Soul 7, the cover is also given, is a musical journey that delves into the intricate concepts of human psychology, exploring the realms of persona, shadow, and ego. The inspiration for this exploration can be traced back to a pioneering psychologist whose profound work shaped the conceptual framework of persona, shadow, and ego. As the band Oh, sorry. As the band reflects on their seven-year journey since debut, they certainly pay homage 
to this figure, the pioneering psychologist. Just tell me the person being talked about. The person BTS is paying an homage to. Which... So you want the name of uh, the psychologist? Yes, right? name of the psychologist. Yes. So is it Carl? I don't know the full name. I'll wait. Is it Carl Wang? Wang. Wang? Yeah. I'll get back to you, Vijay. Going to Utkarsh. Is it Carl Jung? Yes. It is Carl Jung as pronounced and Carl Jung as Jung. written. Okay. So Carl Jung, Swiss. And then the pronunciation is Swiss slash German, which is Jung. And so, yeah, Carl Jung. I, just to clarify to our audience members who don't, who, who haven't quizzed in life, if Vijay had only said Jung and not even Carl, he would have gotten full 10 points, okay, according to internationally accepted rules of quizzing. But only on Carl, you can't give points. And that's why I gave him a chance to improve. But Utkarsh got the exact answer. And if nobody, none of the other three panelists got anywhere close to this, then Vijay would have again gotten points, just like Utkarsh got for three dog night. But Carl Jung is absolutely correct. Yeah. So 11 points there to Utkarsh. And the next direct will be to Balaji. Balaji, Kapil and I are, as you can see, there's a visual also, are potato dumplings made from grated and riced potatoes and stuffed with ground meat, dry curd, cheese or mushrooms. It has been described as a national dish of Lithuania and is typically served as a main dish. Now, what is the origin of the name Kapilinai? So name is given right there, which is owing to its resemblance to something in terms of shape. Is it a uh, series asteroid? Uh, no, going to Arvin. Sorry, pass. Okay, passing to Vijay. <coughs> So is it Zeppelin airships? Yes. Fantastic. Superb. 12 points there to Vijay. Perfect answer. It is Zeppelin. And now the name also makes sense. Uh, after you know Zeppelin, then it seems very obvious. But if you don't know, then it's like Zeppelin. Zeppelin. But uh, the basically the shapes look like the Zeppelin airships and hence the name Zeppelin. Okay. Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Zeppelin airship is the national dish of Lithuania. And yeah. These are the two shapes that are apparently similar. 12 points there to Vijay. Fantastic crack. And I come back to Utkash for something from films now. Okay. Utkash, in classic films, often misremembered quotes have become iconic. Okay. There are many examples of that, but we are discussing one of the most famous examples. One famous example is associated with a timeless movie, Casablanca, 1942, when Humphrey Bogart supposedly utters this line, this quote. However, this popular quote is a misattribution as Bogart's character never says those exact words. Instead, a similar request is made by Ingrid Bergman's character, Ilsa. Despite this, the misquote has endured and even inspired a Broadway film and a film later uh, on starring Woody Allen and Diane Keaton. Just tell me what quote are we talking about? Play it again, Sam. Beautifully done. Play it again, Sam. And that is the request. Uh, that we are talking about. Play it again, Sam, is a really, really famous quote, but it never happens in the movie. In fact, this screen grab is what exactly happened. Uh, Ingrid Bergman says, play it once, Sam, for old time's sake. Okay, and not play it again, Sam. Ten to Utkarsh for play it again, Sam. It was his direct. All three answers of Utkarsh so far have been from the world of music in some sense. Okay, uh, okay. now coming to Balaji. Balaji, local question for you, since you are in the UK right now. In a recent biography of King Charles III, it was revealed that Queen Camilla was affectionately nicknamed Lorraine. This affectionate name was playfully bestowed upon her by friends and family, creating a clever link to royalty. Why was this name chosen? Put funda, like why would you think that she is called Lorraine by her friends as a nickname? And uh, yeah, this is a funda question. So for the, again, our audience which is watching is that funda questions are extremely an uh, integral part of quizzing culture. And for a long time in quizzing, I have avoided funda questions. But now I'm slowly trying to incorporate these questions. Funda question basically means there's no like direct, like a three-dog night question. It's not really a funda question or a middle earth or wealth of nation. 
but this or Bim Richards. But this one is like okay, you'll have to think and maybe be like, okay, what connects Loren to Queen Camilla? Why would the friends call her Loren? What can be the funda behind it, essentially? If I can clarify something. Yes, yes. Was the nickname bestowed to her even before she became linked to Prince Charles or after that? No, no. Uh, since she was with Charles. So after something to do with royalty and Charles. And, okay. Okay. I, I have a, like, a very yes. wild guess. Is it yeah, that yeah. Lorraine is, sounds similar to Long Rain? Ah, nice, but good attempt. This is how funda questions have to be attempted, but not long reign, Lorraine, going to Arvin. Yeah, Um. is Lorraine like the queen in a different language or something? Yes, yes, continue. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> is take, it take a pause, take a pause. And yeah, you're almost there, Arvin. Okay. Um. Is it the queen in French? Yes, perfect. So oh. nice. Too good. What a way to make your way to the scoreboard. Uh, Arvin, 11 points, full 11 points. No deduction. Beautifully done. Uh, La Reine is the queen in French. La Reine. Play on the French for queen. La Reine gives it, made it like, became Lorraine. As, and English royalty usually have had a tradition of cheeky nicknames for each other, usually. And this was her cheeky nickname, which is Lorraine, comes from French Lorraine. Nice. 11 point there to Arvind. And I come to Vijay for the next direct. Vijay, X was probably the first metal used by humans. X possesses a weight nearly twice that of iron. Yet its exceptional malleability likely led it to be one of the earliest metals shaped by humans. Artifacts crafted from Worked X, dating back 4,000 years, have been discovered in the Thracian civilization located in present-day Bulgaria. Despite its long-standing presence in various global cultures, more than 90% of all X ever utilized has been mined since 1848, as noted by the American Museum of Natural History. This significant shift in X usage coincided with the discovery of X at Sutter Mill, California, sparkling the renowned dash x dash. So I want two things from you guys. One is what is x, which is probably one of the first metals used by humans. And what is this black dash x dash? So x is the name of the metal, right? Yes. So you want, uh, so the metal, uh, would that be copper? Uh, no. Passing to Utkarsh. So I'll say X is gold. Okay. And blank X blank would be Klondike Gold Rush. I'll give it to you. I was actually just looking for Gold Rush and gold. Okay. It's actually California Gold Rush. Uh, but Gold Rush is fine and gold is fine. So well done. Gold and California Gold Rush. 11 points there to Utkarsh. And we come to Balaji for the next direct. X is an organization that promotes local food and traditional cooking. It was founded by Carlo Petrini in Italy in 1986 and has since spread worldwide. It strives to preserve traditional and regional cuisine and encourages farming of plants, seeds and livestock, characteristic of the local ecosystem. It promotes local businesses and sustainable foods. It also focuses on food quality rather than quantity. The logo of this is given in, on your screen, which is also a hint. Okay. What is the movement or organization that we are talking about? Looking at a two-word answer. Is this like a famous brand? Have we heard of it? Not sure. Not sure. I'm sorry, Kate. Can I... Ask one more question. Uh -huh. Go for is it. Is it like a like an app or like a like how do we know it as it like a not like an app? Okay. Not like an app or a yeah. I don't know. Red snail. Okay, okay. <laughs> Going to Arvind. 
um i don't know why maybe it's because i'm like half asleep but that uh, the symbol looks like an o u r like is an r i don't know uh no no going to vijay okay so this is a guess based on um, the logo which looks like a snail and uh, the description i would go for slow food perfect it is slow food okay 12 points there to vijay it is slow food okay slow food movement slow food organization you, you might see this logo in some restaurants now if you keep an eye out you will find slow food logo at some restaurants it is slow food and hence a snail like vijay said okay cool uh coming to utkarsh now x is a non profit open source repository for fan fiction and other fan works contributed by users the site was created in 2008 by the organization for transformative works and went into open beta in 2009 as of 1st january 2024 it hosts 12 million 290000 works in over 62830 fandoms the name is inspired by the essay a room of one phone by virginia wolf in which wolf said that a writer needed space time and resources in order to create and the logo is also given on your screen tell me what are we talking about what is the open source repository or what is the website uh um, just guess the alcove sorry utkarsh the alcove not the alcove going to balaji no idea pass uh going to arvin yeah pass going to vijay Is it is it archive of one's own? I'll give it to you. Yeah, archive of one's own. Yes, yes, archive of our own. But that's okay. Archive of our own. That's the that's the that's the play on uh, a room of one's own by Virginia Woolf. And archive literally is a repository and historical records and everything. And archive of our own is a beautiful site for fans for everything like Harry Potter fandom or fan fiction or TV shows and movies and everything. Okay. so this is 13 points to vijay okay next direct is for utkarsh uh, utkarsh responsible for steering a prominent company through challenging times claude johnson played a crucial role when one co-founder fell ill in 1908 and after the death of the other co-founder in july 1910 until his demise in april 1926 he maintained the business's momentum and is notably associated with the 40/50 model now big clue describing himself as the hyphen in a widely recognized brand name which company is linked to claude johnson or which company are we talking about sorry before everyone anyone answers is the is the brand also like names of people or uh, is that uh, yeah okay. yes one co-founder other co-founder are on things uh, i'll guess procter and gamble uh not procter and gamble no i'm not talking about going to balaji uh, is it i don't know hagen dash uh no going to arvin hello no pass arvin passes we go to uh, vijay so uh I understand there's a hyphen right and so would that be holet packard uh no not hp i will start again with utkarsh give a hint uh utkarsh so the hint is think auto brands okay auto brands with two names with a hyphen in the middle timeline from early 20th century think is that enough should i add more hint anybody wants to block hints vijay are you blocking yes okay. Okay, good. Ah, uh, Daimler Benz. Not Daimler Benz. Going to Baraji. Auto brand. Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. Yes, six points there to Baraji. It's the uh, Claude Johnson, also known as the hyphen in Rolls Royce. Okay, this is Rolls Royce. Okay, six points there to Baraji. Baraji works in auto in the same com year in the same country where Rolls Royce mm. is from. So local answer for Baraji. uh that brings us to the end of this quiz let's have a look at the score 
Arvind had uh, zero in the first half. In the second half, he got a fantastic crack, uh, which was French for Queen, Lorraine. And uh, Arvind ends on 11 points. Well done, well done, Arvind. Balaji uh, had 22 in the first half. In the second half, he got uh, Rolls Royce. And Balaji ends on 28. Now we come to Utkarsh. Utkarsh had 19 in the first half. In the second half, he got 10 for... Uh, no, one second. Utkarsh got 11 for Carl Jung and got played against Sam. 10 for that. You got the gold California gold rush. 11 for that. Uh, so Utkarsh uh, gets 51. Right? Yeah. right? 51. Fantastic. Fantastic. Utkarsh, you were fantastic. And in any other panel, you would have won. So I would really, really would be waiting for you to come back to quizzing with members. But now we come to the show stealer. Uh, one of the greatest performances ever in quizzing with the members. I will be honest, when I did the dry run with my friends, uh, the feedback, overwhelming feedback for the quiz was, this is a very tough quiz. I think you're pushing it for quizzing with members. But I said, nah, let's push it. Let's push it a little bit. We'll give hints. We'll add this. We'll do that. I had hints ready for like Zeppelin and everything. But Vijay, the way you played, we didn't have to go, to, barely had to go for the second round in any of this. Some answers that went unanswered in my dry, dry run, even after hints, like inspired from Chinese, then Japanese, Zeppelin, uh, slow food, and archive of our own. You got all of them. You were fantastic. Okay, 46 after the first half, 12 for Zeppelin in the second half, and then uh, slow food, 12 there, and 13 for archive of our own. Uh, Vijay ends on 83. Okay, and Vijay is the new champion for quizzing with the members. I have no regrets now for uh, Carl Jung, no part points, anything, nothing matters now. Vijay completely dominated, and I'll see you, Vijay in the next quizzing with the members with three new challenges. I hope you all had fun. Thank you, Arvind. Thank you, Balaji and Utkarsh. Well played. Thank you. Thank you. you. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Very nice.